This video will discuss what happens to a star after it becomes a red giant. A previous video talked about the changes that happen in a star such that it uh, surface temperature and uh, its luminosity um, change such that it's no longer what we call on the main sequence. But now we have a, um, a red giant star. There's um, hydrogen fusion going on in a shell of hydrogen around the helium core. Now, this helium core was created by hydrogen fusing and forming helium, but the core temperature was not high enough to cause the helium to fuse. Um, this uh, eventually uh, the temperature becomes high enough for helium to fuse, but you know before this happens the core is strange material. It's, uh, it's called degenerate and as the uh, overlying layers of the star pressing in on the core and causing the core to shrink. The temperature is uh, is going up, but the pressure is not going up. Uh, the, the material uh, is in a state of matter that the, uh, the pressure is not connected with temperature. So this degenerate material, this will become important material at the very, when we talk about the very end stages of a star's life, uh, but here we have an example uh, where there's not a connection between temperature and pressure. This is different for, than for the stars on the main sequence. So we reach a temperature finally where it's high enough that the two protons in the helium nucleus uh, being repelled by two protons in another nucleus, um, the protons, the nuclei can get close enough together for the strong nuclear force. And the way this actually happens is that three helium nuclei merge and form carbon. So we have three particles merging and forming carbon. The three helium, it's called the triple alpha process because the helium nucleus is the alpha particle of uh, alpha, beta, gamma radiation from a nucleus uh, fame. So we have the triple alpha process, three heliums fusing and forming one carbon nucleus. Now the creation of energy in the core uh, removes the degeneracy as this temperature has gone up. Uh, so the material is no longer degenerate, it's hot. It has now a connection with pressure and temperature and the helium core expands. As it does so, what do you think happens to the energy output of the star? Well, the helium core expanding actually pushes away uh, hydrogen that's been fusing, pushing it away from the core out into where the temperature is not high enough for the fusion of hydrogen. So actually we get a decrease in the uh, amount of energy that the, uh, that the star is producing. Uh, so this triple alpha process, it, it goes very rapidly inside the star. And some calculations show that uh, the helium in the core becomes carbon in about an hour. Uh, so, you know, very, uh, uh, very rapid process. Not, not all the core, but uh, much of the core is becoming carbon. So it pushes out the hydrogen shell where there's fusion. This helium flash occurs. And now the hydrogen is out to a region where it is not going to fuse. And we have a situation where now there's less energy being created in this region and we have uh, a lowering pressure on the internal. So the overlying layers, the gravity wins again and now compresses the star. The star pulls in and it becomes less bright because the, uh, the size is, uh, is decreasing. So that's our, our, our situation here after the red giant phase. So we're going to drop down just a little bit. Um, so we have uh, some helium left in the core and it's, uh, it's fusing in this, uh, in this cutaway. We have some hydrogen fusion going on here, but it's reduced because the core is expanding and pushing the hydrogen into a cooler region of the star. So we get to a situation where now the helium is the source of energy for the star and we get a helium main sequence. Not a, not a main sequence where hydrogen is fusing to helium, but a main sequence where helium is fusing and forming carbon. And this forms a clustering of stars. The star is 
uh, somewhat stable now, and these conditions persist for a long time. So we we do observe uh, a number of stars in this situation, and we have a horizontal branch, a clustering of stars on the HR diagram. Um, the situation for our sun is a little different in uh, being a low mass star compared to a high mass star. And we have to kind of uh, diverge now in our life story of the stars. Our sun is not massive enough that uh, the temperature of the core will ever be high enough where carbon can fuse. Carbon has six protons and coming in the vicinity of another carbon nucleus that has six protons, the electrical repelling force is very strong, needs a higher temperature for fusion, and the mass of our sun can't create that, uh, that temperature in, uh, in the core. Um, stars that are more massive than the sun, you know, let's say five times the mass of the sun, uh, the core temperature can get to the place where carbon fuses and other elements fuse as well. And this sort of general process of making nuclei from other nuclei is called nucleosynthesis. And it does follow the, uh, the pattern here in this life of the star, in this uh, segment of the life of the star, that the lighter elements are fusing and forming heavier elements. So we had hydrogen forming helium, helium forming carbon, you know, the carbon is, is fusing, and we get elements in the periodic table. You know, silicon, aluminum, oxygen, nitrogen, um, and many others, up, uh, up until we create iron. Then the life story will change a little bit, and that will be in a, in a different video. But nucleosynthesis is the process of producing elements um, in the periodic table. And for this uh, life stage of the star, that can happen up to iron. There'll be more nucleosynthesis we'll talk about when stars explode. Um, but the sun, the sun is, is stuck. The sun can't fuse carbon, so it loses its energy source uh, in the core. More massive stars can continue with fusion for a while, but these, these stars don't last long because the fusion is uh, occurring at a very high rate, and these stars use up their fuel as well. So here's a picture of... Uh, a cluster of stars and uh, we can see some stars on the main sequence down here in the bottom portion we start see stars going into the red giant phase and super giant phase and we have the uh, uh, situation with the helium main sequence here and a gap where there are uh, stars that are oscillating we'll talk about it in another video uh, for stars much more massive than the sun then we form this kind of layering of regions where fusion is occurring um, and the core here nickel iron uh, is uh, the last stage in this uh, in this process but nucleosynthesis has created these other elements that we see in this cutaway drawing again this is for stars much more massive than the Sun the story for the Sun is it'll have carbon in the center surrounded by a, a, a helium uh, fusion region and then hydrogen fusion region, and then hydrogen helium that aren't fusing for the, the bulk of the star. Um, so we've covered star birth, these giant molecular clouds, um, gravity compressing the gas, we get down to the place where the temperature becomes high enough for fusion to occur, the stars on the main sequence, a long, long time on the main sequence, you know, 10 billion years for the sun, of, on the order of that. And then as the hydrogen gets uh, depleted in the core, things change. And we had the extra energy produced in the inside of the star by a, a hydrogen fusion shell around an inert, inert helium core that uh, created extra energy, extra pressure on the inside of the star that pushed the layers outward to the red giant phase. We reach a temperature finally where the helium fuses, and that actually causes a decrease in the size of the star. Uh, because the region where hydrogen is fusing and producing a great amount of energy, that hydrogen fusion got pushed out into a cooler region, and we lost that energy source, so we lose internal pressure, and gravity uh, wins again a little bit. It brings us to a place where helium fusion is occurring and creating carbon. Uh, so here's uh, what we have to look forward in, into the future. Uh, we're going to talk about what happens now after... Uh, 
we get into this red giant phase and this uh, where the helium fusion is occurring, uh, the star is pretty big. It's not uh, back onto the main sequence. And we're going to see that there uh, can be some loss of atmosphere of these stars. For the more massive stars, we're going to see how they uh, have a different ending. And we'll talk about what happens after the planetary nebulas as well, the white dwarf. Um, and then for the very large stars, we talk about supernovas and black holes. Um, so you should be writing down some, uh, some questions here related to the life history of a star in this video after the red giant phase as to uh, why the star shrinks down again. Uh, so that's a little bit counterintuitive in the, in the process here. We get the helium fusion occurring. That actually leads to a decrease in the total energy produced inside the star. And uh, the star size uh, decreases. So there you are. Keep reading. Keep asking questions. And uh, bring those questions to your instructor.